It's only been a few months since Apple introduced the latest generation of smartphones with the iPhone 12, iPhone 12 mini, 12 Pro, and Pro Max. These are the first iPhones to feature a 5 nanometer processor called A14 and come equipped with 5G. However, the iPhone 12 models are still missing some features that Android devices have offered for a long time and that will only come with the iPhone 13. On that basis, in this video, we'll discuss all the reasons why you should wait for the iPhone 13 and not buy the iPhone 12 series. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon to never miss our future videos. Also, let us know from which country you're watching today's video from. Comment it down. Alright, let's begin all the reasons. Reason number one. You only have to wait until September. The new iPhone will arrive in September 2021, at least that's what we anticipate, based on the fact that Apple usually launches a new handset in September, apart from when we are in the midst of a pandemic. Hopefully this year things will return to normal, eventually. Reason number two. 120 Hertz LTPO displays. Many high-end Androids have high refresh rates 120Hz screens. The iPhone 12 series, on the other hand, has 60Hz displays. Apparently, Apple held off switching to the new technology in 2020 because of the negative effect on battery life. But the 2021 iPhone Pro and Pro Max models are likely to adopt 120Hz displays. This would allow smoother animations and faster reaction times, and an always-on function could finally arrive. Reports suggest Apple will use LTPO OLED displays for this. Among other things, these displays support the additive image frequency without requiring additional hardware. The panels will come exclusively from Samsung and are already used in the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. LG is also considered as a supplier, but according to the ELEC, LG will not be able to deliver LTPO OLED screens in large quantities until 2022. Therefore, it is assumed that only the two Pro models of the upcoming iPhone 13 series will be equipped with an LTPO display that supports 120Hz. The cheaper iPhone 13 models will probably offer a conventional OLED screen and continue to work with 60 Hz. Reason number three. Always on function. As we indicated above, another feature made possible by these new screens is an always on function, something that's a feature of Android phones and familiar to those who own an Apple Watch Series 6 or 5. Even when the display is off, it shows important information like the time, battery level, and notifications. This is practical as it means you don't always have to unlock or tap your phone to get this information. This would apparently have been possible with the OLED screen that Apple already uses on all iPhone 12 models, so it should be a safe bet that at least the Pro iPhone 13 models will come with an always-on function. Reason number four. The return of Touch ID. Since the iPhone 10, every new iPhone has only supported face recognition as biometric authentication. Touch ID, unlocking by fingerprint, is no longer a feature. One of the reasons for this is Apple's decision to provide almost borderless displays, which means that there is no space for the physical home button in which the fingerprint sensor was traditionally integrated. Of course, other smartphone manufacturers also had this problem. The solution? In many cell phones, the scanner is now located directly in the display or under the glass. Even the 2020 iPad Air offers Touch ID integrated into the on-off switch. Even if the face recognition is secure and fast, unlocking with the finger remains practical, especially while we are required to wear masks and find ourselves frequently having to type in our PIN code. Touch ID would have been very practical in the iPhone 12 series. With calls for an easy way to unlock the iPhone with a mask on, Apple is set to introduce a method of unlocking the iPhone via the Apple Watch. 
but there are calls for the return of Touch ID to the next generation of handsets, so many will be happy to learn that there are rumors that the iPhone 13 will come with a fingerprint scanner concealed under the display glass. Reason number five. A smaller notch. Unfortunately for the notch haters, the notch will remain on the upcoming iPhone, but it will be smaller. Leaker Ice Universe indicates that the width of the notch in the iPhone 13 will be identical, but the height will be reduced. As a result, the notch will take up less space on the display and hopefully be less annoying. Reason number six. Port-free design. There were calls for the iPhone 12 to come with USB-C instead of Lightning. Obviously, it didn't. So, what of the iPhone 13? Well-known leaker John Prosser is certain that no iPhone will ever support USB-C. However, he indicates in the YouTube video that in 2021, the iPhone could completely dispense with ports, relying only on wireless charging. Reason number seven iPhone 13 with one terabyte. It's a far cry from the eight gigabyte iPhone of the early days. The next generation iPhone could offer one terabyte storage. John Prosser has been saying that the 2021 iPhone will come with one TB option since October 2020. And as of February 2021, analysts at Webbush have addressed their voices to John Prosser's claim stating that their supply chain investigations indicate that the next generation iPhone will offer up to one terabyte storage. The iPhone currently has a maximum storage of 512 gigabytes. That's probably more than enough for most people, but if you're using your iPhone to shoot film in high resolution, the extra storage would be beneficial. So guys, this was our detailed comparison between the iPhone 12 series and iPhone 13 series. I hope you liked our video. If you really did, then smash the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our gadgets-friendly channel, Gadgets Times.